Hi everyone. As you can see, I am with my friend Simeana. She has been my friend for over two years now and we are going to work on a collaboration video together talking about transgender related things. Uh, she is also in a band that I am very happy about. I will have her YouTube channel and her band page so you can check out her music in the description. So I'm gonna allow her to introduce herself. Okay, well, uh, hi, I'm Simiana. Um, as, as Autumn said, I'm also transgender. We've known each other for since I think it was 2014. And uh, yeah, I'm in a band uh, where I perform under the name Primate. Uh, the band is called The Quagars, and they'll have all the stuff down there about that. So I don't know if I'm gesturing down there is really appropriate, but, but yeah, it'll be somewhere around here. Yeah. So... We're going to um, talk about some, some questions related to us being transgender and just to get our, just, just for you to hear our own experiences with, with these specific topics. So the first question I have is, how long have you been transitioning? And I'll just uh, quickly begin here. I transitioned in 2012 is when I started living full time as, as a woman, but Prior to that, to like like a year or two prior to that is when I came out to my family, and since then I have been, I would say I'm pretty much complete with my transition now from 2013 after I had my SRS surgery. So on to you. Well, basically, I started transitioning in 2014. It was around the time I started talking to you. That's uh, sort of why I tracked you tracked you down in the first place, and. Uh, yeah, I just basically was uh, going online trying to find all the information that I could and I came across you uh, and that was very helpful. And yeah, so I started around then. Um, then I started slowly coming out to friends and family. So I started hormones in August 2015 and then a couple of months after that in October I started living full time. And it's kind of been from there ever since. Uh, now I'm just hoping to eventually get surgery and move on with life, really. So what made you realize you were transgender? Well, uh, I'd always had sort of thoughts in the back of my head and things that I couldn't get rid of. And when I was a teenager, I went through a cross-dressing phase, which I, well, I thought it was a phase at the time. Uh, but of course, you know, it did come back. I thought I'd sort of beaten it and I hadn't. And then I couldn't resist it. And I started doing it again. And this time, because it was a few years later, I had access to the internet. I was able to find people like you and, you know, just find more information and realize that I wasn't alone and I wasn't crazy. And it was actually fairly normal. Well, as normal as either of us gets. Mm -hmm. um, so it was okay. And I was actually able to start moving forward from there. But there'd always been thoughts, you know, pretty much dating back to early childhood. Yeah, and I would say it is definitely the same with, with me. Not so much the cross-dressing, but just those early thoughts that I had in regard to when I was younger, thinking I've always wanted to be a female. Always wanted to not be the, the person that I currently was, but be a, someone female that I could have been truly happy as. And those thoughts pretty much started when I was a child and then they, they pretty much left for a period of time and then they came back in my late teen years, which is when I actually started to do something about it. So that has been my journey. Um, moving on. What has been the hardest thing about transitioning? Mm -hmm. I would say I would say 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 for me personally I would say the hardest thing is just all the years that I had to deal with all the, the, the hatred towards myself and not being able to live my life as me until I was in my early 20s, just kind of feeling as though I wasted that part of my life. And now, now, now the hardest thing really, I've... I really wanted to say there is any any hardest thing right now because I'm I'm good and happy where I currently am. What about you? Well, I mean, the hardest part of actually coming out was probably um, dealing with other people. You know, there's the fear of what they're going to say, what might happen, whether you're going to be disowned by the family. Luckily, that didn't happen for me. There were some issues with my mother initially, but she's okay now, which is great. Um, but for a while there, it was a bit 
dodgy, not dodgy, it's the wrong word, but sort of it was, it was a bit sort of shaky there and I didn't know how things were going to turn out. So that was quite scary, really. But other than that, really, just dealing with, occasionally, you know, you deal with what they call chasers and things like that. Or you deal with people that are very ignorant and arrogant. And, but you're going to deal with those sorts of people no matter what you go through in life. So mm -hmm. I think... For the most part, it's been and it has been a very positive experience. It's just there has been those few things, but really, yeah. So, where is the first place in public that you could be your your, your real self? Well, the first time I went out in public was actually to a fancy dress yoga party. <laughs> um, they they had this fancy dress yoga party, and I normally I was already sort of kind of doing it, going in there like I would wear. I was wearing a leotard and shorts. And that was sort of my way of kind of being there, but it was still that was still very much be there as as a male. Um, I just happened to dress like that. But when they did the fancy dress one, I went as a character from Doctor Who called Perry, who was who was a woman who well basically the reason I went as her was because that her costume was a leotard and shorts, so I had the costume already. I just went with a slightly more feminine one and and sort of went with the colours that she wore. And that was um, that was really cool. But the first time I went out properly as me was to a, an event called Alphabet Soup, which is in Northcote in near Melbourne, Australia, where I live. Uh, that was with a, a friend took me to that, and I've met more friends there. Um, but yeah, that was the first time being genuinely me and not playing a character. I guess that's good. That's good. Um, what about for you? For me. The first time, hmm, it's kind of hard to say because I think it was just going out looking looking for clothes. It was I. There was kind of a transition period where I was a bit androgynous with with my look, looking for like female clothing, and a lot of people were kind of confused, like, are you a male or a female? They didn't really know. And then once I kind of got some clothing that I really liked and started to present myself as a female, I think it just kind of continued from there where I just went out to a store to pick up clothing as my female self. So it wasn't really anything special, <laughs> to be honest. There wasn't anything special there. Well, did you find that it was like, there's that feel, I don't know if you had this, but the fear of when you're still presenting as male and going in to buy female clothes. Yes, that, I think that's certainly an issue a lot of people have. And I know with me, it feels kind of awkward, like you're looking for these female clothes when you're yeah. a male. So, um, But that can also be seen as maybe you're picking up something for uh, one of your female friends yeah. or, or or like maybe like your mother or something. I don't know. Yeah, that was um that was sort of what I sort of started to think when I was doing it. when I started buying clothes I was really happy that they brought in self service in a lot of shops so you could basically pick something up and just you scanned it yourself and then you were out of there uh, otherwise it was a bit nerve wracking those first few times but you mm. get used to it and yeah you know and now it's not an issue but before when I was a much larger male with a massive beard it was uh, <laughs> it was a, it was slightly more uh, awkward yeah oh yeah I can I can certainly imagine that. <laughs> So my next question for you is, where would you be if you had not transitioned? Wow. If I hadn't transitioned, I would still be massively overweight. Uh, I would still be in the same situation that I was before. Uh, I would probably have had, there'd be certain negative things that have happened to me that would not have happened, but there's been a lot of positive things that have happened. Obviously, the, the weight loss, I took up gymnastics. Uh, I wouldn't have met you, so that's kind of my my group of friends would have still been like people I knew through when I was doing video production for professional wrestling, or through other bands and things like that. Um, but I wouldn't have had the sort of friends that I've got now, which is um, which would be a great shame because that's really been an amazing part of my life over these last couple of years. Awesome, awesome. And as for me, where would I be? Well. I would not be doing any of these videos for one because I wouldn't be happy or confident with myself. It was the transition that allowed me to to be happy with myself. But where would I be? I would say I would be someone who would be completely 
distant from the world, just in my room all the time, not communicating with anyone, not doing anything. And uh, that's kind of how it was for many years of my life because I couldn't face other people. I couldn't be around other people. So I think that that only could have gotten worse if I had not been able to find the happiness within myself. So, and on to our, our final question that I have for you is, what are your future transition goals? For me, my future transition goals really... Uh... The main one is obviously SRS. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to get that done maybe next year if I can. That's up to the um, <coughs> up to the gender clinic when I, when I'll be allowed to do that. Uh, I have to get them to sign off on it. I don't know if it's the same over here. You need two psychologists to, mm -hmm. to sign off before they'll allow it. Um, then I'll probably go over to Thailand to get it done because it works out to be cheaper and they've got more experienced surgeons. So I don't know. That's kind of the plan at the moment. Other than that, I mean, I'm happy with how I'm living at the moment. Okay. I'd be nice if I could get a more get my voice to be a bit more feminine. But every time I do it, and people out even people in America probably won't know who this is, but I've tried to do the female voice. I sound like Julian Clary, who's a very camp gay British comedian. So uh, it's not quite the voice that I'm going for. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I don't mind the accent, changing the accent so much, just that it doesn't really, it still doesn't sound female. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely a very, very big goal. Yeah. Because SRS surgery is kind of usually the last step a lot of people take. And it's such a major one. And it's just a, this huge, huge life changing thing that it takes so long to actually heal from and to, and to overcome a lot of the the difficulties that you may have with the surgery. But once you kind of get past that for a while, it's it's definitely a very rewarding thing for many people. And I would say for my own future transition goals, I would say at the, at, at the moment I am I am pretty happy with, with how I am and how I look and everything. Um, really the only the only thing that I, I would want to kind of improve upon is um, breasts because I don't really have any, any breasts at all. However, I, I wouldn't want to get any breast implants because I don't want those foreign object in my body. So really the only other option that I'm familiar with is like a fat transplant to increase the breast size. But, you know, if that never happens, that's not a big deal. I, I'm perfectly comfortable with how things are right now and I don't really need anything else to complete anything yeah. else because it's already completed. Yeah. I mean <laughs> so. there are other options like you can get those um, breast pump things I don't know how well that, that well, they, they work but uh, mm. I've, known, I've known of people that have some uh, some good results with them but that might be yeah it might not work for you I don't okay know. okay well I mean it's definitely something to look into but we will get we will cross that road if and when I am ready to do such yeah. thing. I don't think you need to. Yeah. And, you, know, you think you, you, I mean, you look great now, so. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You look good, good yourself. Oh, thank you. So, especially if um, it's amazing to see the changes she has made as well. Just seeing her, the photos of the beard, like, oh my gosh, just it's such a huge change, huge change. Yeah. So, it, it's, it's just amazing to see. To uh, see people's people's changes when they when they transition, so. And I, and I had the massive beard, and I would wear my hair down in front of my face, and I would wear these massive sunglasses. So really, my face was kind of covered most of the time. Mm -hmm. It was like a big mask, a big hairy mask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think that is all of all the questions we have for right now, and. I want to thank you all for, for listening and watching this, this video. I plan to do more types of content like this and to hope, hopefully connect with, um, talk about different subjects with someone else who's also had experience with the said topic. So, um, again, her, her name is Simeona and uh, I'll have all the links to, to her YouTube and her band page in the description if you would like to check that out. Uh, she even, here's something else we should mention here. She made a song that 
that featured me in it a little bit. Not like me singing or being part of it, but she sang about me in the song. Yeah. Well, uh, what happened there was um, I was work- my band was working on our second album, and they sort of had this riff, but I didn't have anything to go with it. And I was watching. There was a couple of other YouTubers I was watching at the time, but I was watching your videos a lot. And that was if I actually wrote the verse about you first, uh, even though I think it's actually the third verse in the song. But yeah, I wrote that, and I thought, well, this could really turn into something. And so I, I basically I contacted everyone who was mentioned in the song, and I never thought she'd get back to me. But her videos had meant so much to me that I wanted to sort of immortalize her in song, as it were. And so I did that. And the fact that she got back to me it really it made meant the world to me at the time. And the fact that we've built this friendship up you know, since then, it's just been amazing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it certainly has been 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 quite amazing. Because I remember when she sent me that song in the beginning, I just thought it was it was just a demo at the time, and it was just really nice that someone actually actually did that. So I um, appreciate our friendship, appreciate what we've been able to discuss, and we will leave this a uh, video for now. So I'm gonna end it on on a hug here. So we. I will get back to you all later. We will see. I will see you all later. Um, she's not going to be here for any any more videos here. But you know, you can check out what a she she does in in the description if you would like to follow her at all. And I thank you for watching this video. And I will see you all later. And thank you for having me. Yep. Bye bye. Okay.